It's the time of year most people, they're setting goals, whether big or small. We all have some way we want to improve ourselves. Over the past year, we've shared stories aimed at inspiring you all year round. Today, we are catching up with some of those organizations and gym owners to see what they are looking forward to in 2020. We also hear from some familiar faces right here at KSAD who have helped build the new week, new you. What's your New Year's resolution? This year, I really want to work on not being so hard on myself and accepting myself for who I am. My personal New Year's resolution is to manage my home time and my work time better. My main goal for 2020 is to get my kids' book printed and published. Overall, just to get back to my fit weight, so I say another about 30 pounds. My New Year's resolution is to be more active this year. Instead of taking a nap, I'd rather go for a walk, or I'm gonna try to go for a walk, for a jog, or for a swim. I don't really do resolutions. Um, I try to do the right thing most of the time, whether it's who I am or what I eat. I'm a mom and a business owner, and it gets very hectic. So I'm gonna put the phone down. I don't wanna be sick. Being sick is the worst, so I wanna be healthy. My resolution is to get more organized. My New Year's resolution for 2020 is to get to know San Antonio, the city, a little bit better and the surrounding areas. I don't actually have a New Year's resolution. I decided several years ago that I was going to quit making New Year's resolutions. My New Year's resolution is to drink more water and less iced coffee because it's mostly just iced coffee and a little bit of water so I'm trying to stay hydrated more this year. This year I want to be better with my finances and save up to buy myself a special birthday present. If I was going to make a New Year's resolution for myself it's to ride my bike well over 50% of the days of the, in 2020. I want to read five books this year, not just on audio, but actually read five books. And what is that special birthday? I'm present? not going to tell you. <laughs> I'm a little bit in disarray as far as my paperwork goes. Uh, so I think if that's in order, I, feel, I will feel like my life is more in order. So I want to eat healthy and clean and not necessarily to lose weight and to look better, but really just to feel better. I want to go to like small towns and see maybe there's breweries, go hiking or different restaurants just here in the city. I also want to keep surrounding myself with people that push me to be better, who love me and who support me. I am um, going to ride the Camino de Santiago in Spain in May and June. And then I'm riding in Belgium in uh, late June, July, and then I'm going to just ride as much as I possibly can around town here to get ready for those trips. For my girls in my group, I just hope that we just continue to grow as a community and we, we just continue to just bring in new faces. We are just so desiring to host retreats and even chapter it. Hopefully we can expand the mission to other gyms. It's really fun what we have planned um, in the new year for the tribe. We're excited about it. Two major goals for Ride for Reading in 2020. One is to increase the number of volunteers who cycle with us to the schools. The second one is to um, be able to reach more children during the summer. Our goals at MixFit for 2020 are to reinvest in our members and retain our members by making new updates, taking a fresh look, and reinvesting in them. We're creating rewards programs, and it's going to be very exciting. New Year, same David. New Year, same David. No, New Year, much improved David. Okay. There's things we can work on. In 2019, starting this segment was my New Year's resolution. And so in 2020, I hope to continue building it and telling inspiring stories. Well, now you saw the leaders of Break Down the Walls, Ride for Reading, and Fit Chicks under construction. Break Down the Walls has their next all-female workout. That's going to be on January 19th. Ride for Reading will start delivering again in February and Fit Chicks Under Construction is setting out on some new nutrition ventures. We also talked to the owner of Mural Ride, who hopes to show more locals different parts of the city in 2020. You can catch up with all these guys and all of the other stories we featured. Just go to our website, kset.com. A lot of healthy ideas in there for the new week, new you, or new year. New or just same old David. Or just <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay with same old David. <laughs> All right. Well, I said that, that this is not the same old essay live. 
It's no, new. No. Because it's, it's new. First Monday of 2020. This <laughs> kicks off the new year. <laughs> yes, and a lot of people are making resolutions on uh -huh. eating healthier, mm -hmm. but this doesn't mean you have to just kind of take yeah. everything out of the fridge all right. at once and replace it all, right? Right, right. You want to go step by step. And here to help you break it down, of course, is Suzanne Parker with Powerhouse Bakery. Yes. Uh, you know, I love getting to look at 2020. It's a chance for us to really look at how do we go from good to great really healthy diets. And if you keep it simple and pick one thing, that's the way to do it. And you said go for bread, right? I think that's great. It's an all-American favorite. Everybody loves bread. So how do you do it so that you can still feel good about your New Year's resolution? Okay, and you still want to have the taste, the texture, everything like that. It's She's going to show us some great ways to, boy, have some really healthy meals, all different types of diets and things like Whatever that. Whatever diet you want. Keto, okay. vegan, paleo, always gluten-free at Powerhouse Bakery, but we got lots of choices. All right, and here to teach us uh, how to tackle the biggest projects in the new year is, of course, Living Order San Antonio. And you want to get organized, and there is a trick, one big secret to getting organized. We're going to tell you all about that. And you know, that big game is coming up, but what you also love to watch are maybe the puppies in that other big yes, show. Yes, and we have got a local celebrity who's going to be competing in that big game. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Welcome back. We're up to 69 degrees. We'll be uh, near 74 this afternoon. Cold front slides through tonight. Picks up the winds a little bit. We're going to get a northerly wind tomorrow. Let's hope it doesn't kick up the mountains here. It counts even higher. Uh, 67 tomorrow. A little cooler. 66 Wednesday. We'll start to see clouds increasing towards the end of the week. <coughs> And maybe some showers and storms here by Friday as our next front moves in. All right, looks like they could have a rough show today on SA Live. Rough show. Rough. You can see the dog. Oh. There. They had dogs. Rough, rough. Oh, rough. oh my gosh. That Man. was the worst joke. Are we starting ever this year off like that? It. You can't get the simple ones? That's a classic Tad <laughs> joke right <laughs> there. Woof. I would say woof. A woof year. <laughs> Let's take it downtown. <laughs> SA Live. Please take it away. Go ahead and start right now. Thank you. Well, from the streets of San Antonio to the biggest game played on four legs, how a local rescue dog made it to the starting lineup for this year's Puppy Bowl. It is a sweet treat full of flavor and history. Why, today's the day to indulge on this dessert that is fit for a king. And a little planning now can ensure you have a stress-free year. Learn some great habits to keep your life organized. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Oh my gosh, it couldn't be any nicer. We are outside right now. Hello and happy marvelous Monday, <laughs> the first Monday of the year. And I didn't realize, you know, there's always a national this day and a national this day. It's national like Monday, Monday. It's national Monday, Monday? Something like that, yeah. Okay. They're, this is actually Today being is... celebrated because it's the first Monday of the year. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Okay. Extra stuff to celebrate it for. Okay, well, even if you're not a fan of Mondays, they are all about fresh starts and new beginnings. So this uh, so we're here to help get that first week of the new year started. And good afternoon, everyone. This is Fiona. She's not a fan of Mondays all the time, Gorostiza. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Yeah. And he always amazes me at how he's just always so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. This is Mike Osterhage. <laughs> All right, well, one way you can tricks. set yourself up for a great start today is with a great healthy breakfast. And we have someone here who can help. Yes, indeed. She has a degree in nutrition science and has been teaching people to live healthier lives for about 25 years now. And she's opened her own business. And she was the corporate wellness coach for HEB. Yeah. Yes. All right. Suzanne Parker, the founder of Powerhouse Bakery, is here to show us some healthy twists on a quick and easy breakfast. You know, I love this 2020 start. It's uh -huh really exciting times because so many people now are looking at lifestyle change and really looking at what's in our food. So from that we get people that want to follow carb free, gluten free, grain free, all kinds of freeze. So what I'm <laughs> showing you today is how do you kind of get the best of both worlds? And, right. and a lot of that yeah. can be confusing sometimes. Yeah. It's like, what, there's okay, so what, many if, diets if out yes. there. Yeah. yeah, It's confusing. And got to combine that with the most important meal of the right. day too. Because whether we're starting our exercise program or we're just trying to prevent illness, we still need to have a well-balanced nutrition plan. And so what we try to teach at Powerhouse Bakery is still we want to look at proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So what we got on that side is we've got right our here. keto lineup. 
So we're going to assemble a keto bun. Mm -hmm. So that particular bread is so soft and luscious, and it is grain free. So hard to imagine, but true. It's even yeast free. So what we use is an egg base, mm -hmm. and we use psyllium husk, which is a fiber. So there we go, high in fiber and very low in calories, and of course carb free. And then you've got a frittata that yes. I just put all over my From hand. From an Italian background, the frittata is so lovely. It's loaded with herbs and any kind of dairy-free cheese. And then, of course, I used free-range eggs. Mm -hmm. And you put that top on it, and you've got a beautiful about 500 calories, about 43 grams of protein, and 10 grams of fat, and zero carbs. Okay. So and that this is gets you on the keto diet, right? Yes, that okay. is keto. And so for, for, for those who don't know, what, what is keto? Yeah, you know, so like To keto, be on keto, what, what are you not that's eating? That's so great. You know? So basically, if you're following a keto diet, you're trying to train your body to burn your own fat stores, which means you're in intake of carbohydrates needs to be really low so that your body can get into this metabolic shift. But be careful, it's not for everybody. Um, just, you know, getting used to having one healthy thing in your breakfast is a good start. If you really want to do keto, you got to be careful and have a doctor and a dietitian kind of guide you. Okay. Yep. Next. next. So the next for... one is the kind of flip side. So remember we talked about taking the macronutrients to a whole new level. This is my beautiful focaccia. So it's a bread made with all grains. So it's perfect for the vegan because no animal products. And here we've got this beautiful square that's got teff and buckwheat. At Powerhouse Bakery, we do everything gluten-free. So this is a beautiful blend of the mighty seeds, which are chia, hemp hearts, and flax, and some um, vegan cheese and herbs. Oh, wow. All of the nutrients packed into a little square of yumminess. And a vegan diet is, it's high in fat, right? It can it be. Can be? Okay. Not necessarily. Okay. Vegan is everything plant-based. Okay. So no animal, anything, everything from the earth. Okay. Which is a big trend now. People are really wanting to learn how do you eat more from the earth. Now, sometimes people think, okay, you know, you hear somebody that, oh, I'm vegan now, but you can eat one vegan thing during the day exactly. and still enjoy a steak later on that exactly. night. Exactly. I think that's so smart. Learning how to incorporate more grains and herbs and vegetables. And it's okay if you don't want to be exclusionary and take out all animal products. That's a, a choice that you and your, your healthcare provider can make. And then to go with that, you've got some of... Yes! So hummus is so fun, you guys. I mean, now we've got all different varieties of savory, even sweet. Hummus is made from beans, and then you add sesame tahini or some kind of oil. There's your fat. I even add some hemp hearts to mine, which again is a great way to get protein, minerals, and excellent healthy fats. So the hummus can be right on top of your healthy bread grain. Um, we even have these great little bagels which are so good with the hummus. Again, it's a plant-based bread that we've made that's egg-free and dairy-free. Next meal? Mm -hmm. Next meal is the paleo. So that's yes. going to really blend the two extremes, right? So here we've got a beautiful way to do a fried egg, free range, paleo loves that. Anything that's minimally processed is going to work on that paleo diet. Then we've got our grain-free bun, or we can even use the focaccia that's got that dairy-free cheese. Don't forget to add some mighty seeds and lots of beautiful greens to add to our plate to make everything well-rounded. Okay, and so for those who may not know what paleo is exactly, it's what? So paleo, again, is a, a style of eating that looks at the way the food is assembled. So many paleo diets will take out things like no beans and no grains, but they still want to get protein, so it can come from an animal, they don't want dairy, and it can also come from plant-based. So paleo means it's got to be raised properly, organic and free range, and it needs to have some protein, carbohydrates, and fats. Okay. It's, a little, it's a little confusing, but if you want to maybe try cooking yeah. some of this at home, you can, or pick it yeah. up to go, right? And you know what, Powerhouse Bakery, you can buy just the bread if you want and mm -hmm. make your own meals. We do cooking classes. We do consulting, but we love to just pack it for you and you can grab healthy to go. And healthy doesn't mean it doesn't have to have flavor because this bread, even with no flour yes, in it. Yes, exactly, that's grain good stuff. free. And you know, I tell you, never eat a food you don't love. There's so many great foods out there that we've got plenty of ways to make healthy taste amazing. Located out there in the uh, medical center. Yes. And if you'd like more information about Powerhouse Bakery, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the as seen on SA Live tab. Suzanne, thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, even with the best breakfast, your days can quickly get crazy, out of control. You're battling clutter, appointments all day long. There's a list here, but we have help. Yes, she's helped businesses, teachers, doctors, hospitals, artists, and everyday people get control of chaotic work and living spaces and was one of the first certified professional organizers 
in South Texas. Also managing to find the time not to write just one, but several books. Helene Segura from Living Order San Antonio is here to teach us about how to tackle the biggest projects of the new year. And, you know, that's one of the big things. I've got to get organized. I've got to do it. But there's a method to conquering the madness, right? Right, exactly. It's human nature for most people to just want to go out and buy something or sign up for a class. And that may not be the best next step because it may not solve all of your issues. So the most important question you can start off with is, what is the main challenge that I need to work on? So that way you can hone in and focus and truly concentrate on that instead of spreading yourself thin and, and trying to solve so many problems at one time. So you have to be organized about being, being organized. organized. Exactly. You need a plan. You need a game plan. Right. right. Okay. And that would be the next step. You want to first narrow down your challenges. So right now, what part of your life is causing you some stress or some challenges? Okay. okay. So mm -hmm. mine, I'll go with this right here. We'll look at this. So I say okay. office. All righty. We've got your... office. Lose holiday. Oh, wait. And these are usually the top two resolutions, getting organized and then also on board. getting okay. healthier. <laughs> so the next question would be to start narrowing down, Mike, what about your office is bothering you? Anything in particular? And then Fiona, for losing holiday weight, what do you think are some steps that you can take to begin that process? Okay, I'll just say all the, uh, is it too vague to say the clutter? No. Okay. You can start with that. And then what types of clutter is bothering you? And then, so just keep going on with these mm -hmm, notes? Mm-hmm, Okay, so, okay, you've Put got- on the board. Uh, Healthier, Healthier choices. choices. Yes. Okay, so what kind of choices <laughs> are we talking about? Uh, business cards, I'll say. All right, so we go, we've got, mm -hmm. and, and it helps when, with anything, like you say, to, to write it down, right? On the board. Right, okay. exactly. And if you're not paper inclined, then you can use your phone, you can use your iPad. The whole thing is you want to go through this planning process. And okay. it's kind of like, um, also what you said about not conquering everything all at right. once. Mm -hmm. The old adage, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Exactly, so you can Don't focus in. <laughs> yeah, save the elephants. <laughs> That's okay, Mike. Eat a keto bread one yes. bite at a time. One bite at a time. And so, Fiona, if we were looking at no bad sugar, we would yeah. want to take a look at is there a certain kind of health regimen you should be on? And if you weren't doing this before, how are you going to schedule time to make sure that you do the meal planning, you do the proper kind of cooking, and then also get that onto your calendar. You make an appointment with yourself. Gotcha. Mike, you have the desk. So, so, if I, so if I said business cards right. here, I just don't go buy run to the store and, and buy something that's the business card thing. I need it to work for me. So I need to see how many cards I have, mm -hmm. um, which ones I want to use, and then I go from there, right? Exactly. So if you'd like to use that top drawer there in that organizer, this oh. is a great quick way to clear out small bits of clutter on your desk. So you can put your business cards in there. They're not perfectly organized. Right, but you at can, least they're yes. You know <laughs> which door to go to because most people don't even look at their business cards anyway, so it's all contained. And then you've got post-it notes everywhere. The post-it notes are small, so you can corral them in one drawer. And then you've also got pens that you can corral in the bottom drawer. So this instantly clears out a good square foot of space so you can start working. And then most people usually have all these piles. But also, mm -hmm. I've, I've accomplished something. Yes, yes you have. Too. Something that's easy and that's going to motivate you to keep going and pr proceed with this change. And so that is going to help you be successful. So look, we have all these papers here. Um, if you have a lot of projects going on and you're very paper oriented, you can go ahead and slot these into file folders. And what happens is by going vertical, it becomes a lot more visible so you can actually see what you have on your desk. You don't lose time hunting for things. Then here we have some odd size objects. Magazine holder. It can corral oh. everything and it keeps it vertical. Uh, yeah. Okay. And now, just because it's on your desk doesn't mean it has to stay there. Two awesome books. We usually don't read books at our desk. So this actually can come off the desk. It doesn't need to be here. Great ideas. Great so stuff. So be yes. organized about being organized. organized. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> it's your tribe. <laughs> and a label maker always comes in handy. So for more information on Living Order San Antonio, go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Helene, great ideas. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Still ahead on SA Live, folks are tackling their get fit goals in the new year. How to keep from giving up at the gym and giving in to your cravings. We've got five ways that'll set you up for success. But first, it's the Rough Fest. Get it? Roughest? Toughest game happening all year. No, not that football thingy. It's the puppy one. Why San Antonio has a big hometown connection to this year's Puppy Bowl. It's next on SA Live. Live. Well, animal rescues are proud of every life they save, but one group is beaming after their pup is getting national attention. Yes, indeed. Tammy Parker from the Texas Chihuahua Rescue is here to share about the exciting news. Welcome. Yes. What's Hello. going on? Yes. Well, we get to be in the Puppy Bowl on Animal Planet this year, which is super exciting. Congratulations. Um, it brings a lot of uh, national attention to the rescue and other rescues all around the United States and other areas. It's, it, this is so incredibly exciting because one of uh, your chihuahuas is 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 going to be on, as you mentioned, and it's named Luca, right? Yes. Okay, tell us a little bit about Luca's So story. Luca's original name was Ileana, and her adopters renamed her Luca. Um, she had come to us in late August about, um, so her and six of her siblings were actually left in a small shelter out towards Uvalde um, in this kind of makeshift crated box and with no food or water or anything, just left there um, while they were closed. So when an employee came in the next day to the shelter to open the doors, they were just left there um, due to the fact that they were beyond capacity and couldn't take care of dogs that small. They called us. Um, one of our amazing volunteers went out and got them and brought them to the ranch, and we got them to the vet and all healthy and cleaned up and um, healthy enough to be on the puppy bowl. <laughs> oh as can be. Uh, now, Luca is training in training right now, so couldn't be here, but these other little ones here, athletes, are who? Um, so we have Yoda is in the pink sweater. She is four <laughs> months old, and she is uh, going to be available for adoption next week. It's a baby Yoda. Um, she's a little, yep, she's a little baby Yoda. <laughs> so um, she's a, like a terrier chihuahua mix, lots of energy. She's very, very cute. She came to us with a a lot of skin condition just due to fleas and ticks, but her coat is growing back really nicely now. And the other one is Baby. She's actually about a year old and only three and a half, four pounds. Um, she's a little more shy than Yuna. <laughs> yeah. But she's trying. She's getting there. And you're holding? And this is Chills. This is our little uh, TXCR ambassador. She's not available for adoption, but she wouldn't stop crying in the craze. Oh, <laughs> so she's, not, she's here. She's here she, to say hello. She was in the purse, but she decided she wanted to be on television instead. Yeah. She was a little jealous of Luca. I didn't of realize star. that all of the dogs in the Puppy Bowl are from rescues. Yes. Big so rescues, all, small rescues yep, all around all, the United States. Yep, yes. Mm -hmm. so, so they get to be. Is that how dogs are selected? Uh, yes. Yeah, so okay. it's not. So the dog itself is not selected. Right. The rescue is selected. The rescue so, is. Okay. so yes. So Animal Planet and other. Um, other partners of theirs that are in this process select different rescues and um, humane societies and groups all across the world and um, bring them to Animal Planet for the Puppy Bowl. Oh, that's great. And of course, Puppy Bowl is going to be coming up the day before the big game on that Saturday, but there's something else that these little ones might yeah, participate so we, in. Yes, so we, Texas Chihuahua Rescue and San Antonio and the Charity Bar are hosting our very own Puppy Bowl. So at the Charity Bar here in San Antonio, they have a huge dog yard and deck area, and you can bring your dog and sign your dog up for the Puppy Bowl. There'll be raffles, prizes. Um, you could come out and just have some drinks and fun and food, or you can come out and have your dogs play, and there's raffles. Uh, lots of prizes and, and, and a good course, time for everybody. And of course, being having one being represented in the yes. you know in the puppy bowl, it's going to really help out Texas Chihuahua Rescue, right? Yes, it yeah. should. It should bring a lot of attention to the rescues, and we're just happy that Animal Planet does it for all the rescues. It really it really highlights and shows you know how important it is to adopt and spay and neuter, and they know they you mention that often in their puppy bowls. So it's really a great. It's a great accomplishment for the rescue and for San Antonio. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. You. All right, well, once again, the Fur Baby Bowl is going to be happening Saturday, January 18th at 2 p.m. at the Charity Bar. You can register your pup to play or just come down, enjoy the show, and donate. There's going to be food, drinks, and a silent auction. You can also go anytime this month to make sure the Texas Chihuahua Rescue wins the race between them and two other dog rescues. Yep. For more information 
about the Texas Chihuahua Rescue and all the fun events happening this month, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Still ahead on SA Live, it's the new year, time to freshen up that wardrobe. What clothes you should be tossing and one way you can quickly and easily clean up your closet. And next, are you one of the men looking to get your life on the healthy track right now? The local group helping guys make amazing transformations. That's straight ahead. Keep it here. Lower motivation, lack of energy, not feeling yourself. No, it's not just the post-Christmas blahs. All these roadblocks can be in your way to achieving your goals and resolutions for 2020. Is, is it you or the man in your life? Kind of tired or not feeling 100%? Well, Mayo Medical Group is here to help out. And Roman Garcia is joining us, and he's been a patient with them for how many years now? About three years now. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been great because... I tell people, you know, it's something that's been a real life changer. It's been a fountain of youth for me. And the fact that I've been able to stay uh, with weight down, with my energy up, and, and just feeling healthier all the time, I think is a real testament to, to how it works. And it's one of those situations where you, when you have a little more energy, then that creates a little bit more energy and it more does. get up and go. And, yeah, and have it's all exponential. It really is. You know, uh, you know when, when I went in to do my consultation uh, based on someone's recommendation and, and my numbers came back, I was... Uh, like less than 200 of my testosterone. I should have been somewhere around like 800 or mm -hmm. at least up over 700. And uh, so I got started that day. And within about a week or two, I was feeling the difference in the way I slept and my energy just started creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. Now I have days where I'm just, matter of fact, I was sharing that with someone earlier that, I mean, I just, when you feel good and you feel energetic, you're just so motivated to do all kinds of stuff. So, you know, I picked up new projects. I'm doing all kinds of different things. I have days where I feel just super excited and I'm glad, like I said, that I've been able to stay at that level. Well, the proof is in the pictures and take a look at some of the uh, the before and after pictures. So this was three years ago, yeah. basically. Yeah, I was. And then you got Buff McGillicuddy on the right there. <laughs> yeah, I looked like I'd given up on life on that left one there. And then oh, on the right, and then you. And on the right, uh, hello, ladies, how you doing? Good to see you. So, yeah, no, it's a world of difference. And like I said, it's the easiest thing I've ever done because people would ask me, do you hit the gym a lot? Are you, like, being super strict on your food? And I really haven't been. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, your, your body just kind of starts responding. I've dropped 40 pounds. I've put on about 10 pounds of muscle. And uh, I'm not someone who's hitting the gym all the time. Matter of fact, just barely recently have I really kind of started doing some stuff at the gym. And this is... Pretty much the same thing, and, and I speak as a, a layman on this, but that you know, women go through their their changes when they right. get into the forties and fifties, right. the change of life, and and through menopause, and yes. men do too. They a, women and, lose hormones, so do men. Yeah, and that's the thing. Women are very good about talking about it. They talk about their their sex drive. They talk about their emotions and how it's the the, the hormones are affecting them. Guys go through the same thing. Matter of fact, low testosterone is linked to depression, and mm -hmm. so it's one of those things that you start to get that balanced out. I mean, it really is a life changer. And covered by insurance. Yeah, that's the great thing. When you come in for a consultation, bring your insurance info uh, because uh, low testosterone is a real medical condition. Okay, and a big uh, benefit, or should say not a benefit, but you've got a special going on here. <laughs> it, is a big benefit. Benefit it is too, a big so. benefit. It is a big benefit. Yeah, so a great deal. Yeah, call now, first 10 callers, or you can text. Um, you get your consultation for $39, and that's almost about $300 value. So it's a great deal. Plus, Mail Medical is going to give you a $100 gift card to use towards oh, wow. your services. Okay, yeah. once again, give them a call or text 210-361-1203. And the first consultation is just $39. That's a $260 savings plus that $100 gift card to use toward Mail Medical Group Services. And once again, give them a call or visit their website at mailmedicalgroup.com. Roman, good to see you. Thank Happy you, buddy. New Year, Happy sir. New Year to you. Yes, sir. All right, still ahead on SA Live, Three Kings Bread with some San Antonio restaurant royalty. The folks with La Familia Cortez are here to show us how to make Rosca de Reyes. And New Year, new closet. While you're in the organizing mode, putting away all those Christmas decorations, it's a good time to rethink how you organize your closet, the pieces to put away, what to keep, and what to get rid of. All that up next. It's time to maybe clean out that closet. I know a lot of y'all probably have closets like mine at home which look like a disaster. So here to help you do that with four great ideas on how to start paring that closet down and letting go of stuff is 
Haley Pew, personal stylist with All C Details. Thank you for having me. And Fiona, I tell you what, I clean out so many closets with my clients, <laughs> and these are normally the things that we just we just cleanse the whole closet of. All right. So, so yeah. first way, first thing to start doing is what? Just clean out yesteryear. Anything that is just hanging in your closet, you haven't touched, you haven't worn it, let's get it out. Okay, so if you haven't worn it in a decade or decades, or close to a decade, <laughs> let it go. Definitely. So I have these jeans here, and these I focused on getting rid of because it's a cut. And let's just get it out of the closet. All right, next idea. Say so long to sentimental. Mm -hmm. If you've got anything in your closet, you just love it because it was your, your prom dress or your first date, Let's go ahead and revamp your closet and get rid of things like that. It's just hanging around and taking up space. It could give somebody else some joy. Oh yes, <laughs> for sure. So another thing we can eliminate is designer apparel. Anything that you have in your closet that is, you know, from a designer. This is from Billy Reed and I love it, but I've just never worn it or touched it. Go ahead and sell it if you're not touching it. It's not doing any good in your closet anymore. Okay, so it's important to remember just what season we're in if you want to start getting rid of clothes. If you have things that are seasonal, they'll sell amazing. They'll sell amazingly on apps. So if you've got anything and it's cold, you know, and we're going into January and you want to cleanse your closet, new year, new you, go ahead and take out the things that you're not wearing that season just so you can go ahead and, you know, sell something and buy yourself something new that's a little more on trend for the season. But it's important to keep the basics, right? Yes, don't eliminate your entire closet. So one thing I'd like you to keep a hold of is anything with structure. So anything from, you know, this is a J. Crew dress, so it's got great darting, great structure. And even though my client wanted to get rid of it, I, I, I would really love for you guys to hold on with things with structure. You can put a blazer over it, you can wear it to work, you can wear it to a wedding. So just focus on structure, good darting. If it's not worn, don't get rid of it. Keep anything with structure that you can practically wear to weddings, work, virtually anything. So you're looking for classically cut pieces, yes. right, that um, that aren't trendy? Yes. Okay. So now that you've cleaned out your closet, you have a couple of options, right? You can make some money off it, or you can donate or do a little bit of a bo of both, right? Yes, for sure. So I'm happy to cleanse your closet, but you can do all of this yourself at home. In cleansing your closet, there's different apps out there now that you can picture all of your items you're not wearing anymore. So an app like Poshmark is an excellent spot to start. Um, just picture your items you're not wearing anymore and make your own money. You can use that money to therefore buy new wardrobe. So if you've got your things posted on Poshmark and they just haven't sold in a while, they're not moving or making any sales, you can definitely donate to organizations like Dress for Success. So if you've got great things for work, I would definitely recommend going to Dress for Success and donating your items. And if you've got anything like prom dresses, um, there are local charities who take in prom dresses throughout the year and donate to someone who really needs a prom dress. So it's not all about making money, but it's great if you need to do so for a new wardrobe. Haley, thank you so much. Thank all right, you. you offer, of course, stylish services and you help folks clean out their closet. Tell folks how to find you. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. It's styled by Haley Pew, H-A-I-L-I-P-U-E. And for all that information, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. After you clean that closet, the road to the new you might lead to the gym. Straight ahead, we'll show you five things that could be a huge help in making sure you stick to those workouts and healthy living. I'm going. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, you don't need to be an expert to know healthier living is one of the biggest resolutions for the new year. It's easy to say you'll start exercising and eating right, but it, it can be hard to do and even harder to stick to. I'm yes, speaking and, from experience. And Giselle Caballero is the founder and owner of Mix Fit and is here to tell us how to kind of put these resolutions into your lifestyle, right? Yes, and so we're gonna share with you five tips today. Okay. And the first one is finding an accountability partner. Ah, so, okay. Okay. you've gotta find somebody, a friend, a family member that okay. wants to Wonder get in shape, right. wants to get active, and you guys have to set a schedule. So finding an accountability partner isn't just saying, hey, you're my partner. It's right. committing to each other, setting a date, making a schedule, 
and holding each other to that. So this right. is not something that is a, if you got the time for it, maybe kind of, sort of. So he's going to have to come over and pry the Ben and Jerry's out of my hand at like yes. midnight or something? Yes, <laughs> you this, do. This is like brushing your teeth, going to work, Correct. anything like that. It's got to be a part of your day. It right, needs to be a week. priority. It needs to be something you set ahead of time with someone like a doctor's appointment. It is for your health. It is for something very important. So make it important and hold each other accountable. You both can't say, I'm not going today. The other person has to pick the other person up and vice versa. Okay. okay, and do tens and do, don't just yes. let them go and ah, that's good enough. No, Correct. make them do 12. So. There you go. All right, so let's say we skip the gym one day. How can we sneak fitness into the day? Move, get moving, anything that you can do. If you can fit in the 30 to 45 minutes a day workout with your partner or by yourself, great. Take the dog for a walk, uh, walk to the mailbox. But even better, you know, if you can't do that and you're running errands, park at the end of, opposite end of the parking lot. You know. Um, just park a little further at work. Take the stairs instead of the elevator. Anything just is better every than little thing nothing. that you can do, yes, to get moving, to get more, more. Activity. And even if those those days that it's like oh, I don't feel like going to the gym, if you just go there and even walk on the treadmill instead of jog, yes. that's better than nothing. Exactly. Or if you just have 15 minutes, every minute counts. So get those minutes in, get those steps in. Food-wise, we're talking about protein and not just any, but it's got to be lean protein, right? Yes. So another tip would be to incorporate a lean protein every meal. And the reason we say lean, because it's lower in saturated fat, it's going to be a little higher in protein. And some of the examples would be, uh, for beef, we want to try to aim for a ground beef that's probably 90% lean. Uh, chicken, you want to have skinless chicken is going to be the best. Uh, tilapia, cod, uh, halibut, they're going to be a little bit more leaner fish. Uh, fatty fishes are good too, eel, salmon, uh, a mixture of both is, is not bad. Uh, pork, you want to go with a loin. Mm -hmm. is going to be also a leaner cut of pork. People always ask you know, if pork is good or not. Uh, lean cuts of meat always go there. And the eggs and the cottage cheese and yogurt and stuff? Right. If you don't do meat uh, and you still do some type of dairy or eggs, we can go ahead and go with the egg whites uh, or boiled eggs. Again, quick. Make it simple for yourself. The way, you know, don't make it complicated on the resolution. Get a protein, pick a lean one, get, get some boiled eggs, and uh, make a change. Mom right. right. always said. Yes. Eat those veggies. Yes. yes. So with protein, add a green vegetable. Add a protein, add a green. Leafy greens are going to be the best. So any leafy green that you like, they're going to be, again, uh, more minerals, more nutrients. Uh, spinach is going to be, spinach and kale is going to be the superfood that you're going to want to do. If you don't like it, find something you like. Add a vegetable and keep it raw. It's always best to keep raw. Okay, because mm -hmm. you'll cook all the good stuff out you of it. You usually right? do. Most people do. Last mm -hmm. but not least. Yes, and this is probably the easiest yes. thing to do, but the hardest to remember to do. It's all the day. easiest, but also <laughs> the hardest. We yeah. have such a hard time consuming water yeah. uh, with so many options out there. But the goal is to the equation would be you know drinking half of your body weight in ounces. So if you were um, maybe an average of 200 pounds, mm -hmm. you're going to drink 100 ounces of water. So maybe like a gallon. That's right, a, so for yourself, that would be... That's a lot of water. It, it's a but it will fill you up, though, too. It, you won't get will. as hungry. Well, your appetite won't be as big when it is time to eat. Okay. Um, and it's giving your body, the, you know, it's helping to revitalize your body and give you what it needs. So somebody, say, for example, like myself or Fiona, we probably want to yeah, have two of these way, a day. You know, like a right. you know, mm -hmm. pounds. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it would be that. Good information. Keep it simple. As yeah. always. Thank yes, you. thank you. <laughs> All right. For more information, of course, about Mixed Fit SA, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Next on SA Live, you have an excellent excuse today to do just a little indulging with a sweet treat. The story behind this cultural cake and why today is the day to eat it, that's coming up. Stay with us, you're watching SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. Oh, well there it is, Meet Tierra, which of course never closes open all year long, 24 hours a day, and they've got a great bakery there too. And even if you're trying to eat healthy, today you have a great excuse to enjoy some cake, king cake, to be inside, yep. exact that you're looking at right there. Miguel Jorge, the manager from Meet Here, is here to tell us the story about behind Rosca de Reos. How are we doing, guys? Yeah. Happy New Year's, Happy good to see you. Happy New Year's. This is very important because today is the epiphany, the 12th yes. day of Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. In Spanish, we call it Dia de Reyes, mm -hmm. which is the day of the kings, mm -hmm. is whenever the kings went uh, and found baby Jesus and took him all these gifts. Um, everything on the Rosca has its meaning. As you can see, it's, it's shape never ends very much. Like everything is connected together. That means God's love is uh, infinite. Like it doesn't end for us. Um, the baby Jesus that they, we have inside the Rosca is the baby Jesus, how they were hiding him so they wouldn't find him and kill him. Mm -hmm. And then everything on top of the Rosca 
means all the gifts that the uh, wise kings took to. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Okay, yes. So that's representative of yes, that. Yes, and okay. this originated in France, and then Spanish people took it to them. In France, it started as a tradition. They would make the, the, the rosca, then they would put um, this thing inside, and whoever found it, uh, he was considered the king. Um, and then Spain took it, and they make it their own, and they took it to Mexico, and that's how it became a tradition um, here. Like in mid-Mexico, uh, we don't give gifts during Christmas. We do it during the King's Day. Oh, I didn't, yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, because okay. that's whenever they took the gifts to baby Jesus. And then, of course, you slice it uh, yes. and see who gets mm -hmm. the baby Jesus. Yes, and let's just remember that we have a mommy tierra. Uh, today is the last day. So you don't have to go look somewhere else. And we also have a hot chocolate there. So that way you oh, don't have to yeah. be looking yeah. for anything else. Oh, king cake and hot chocolate. chocolate. That sounds really good. You know, I've, I've never heard of this for, right. for this. I've always thought about it as... Um, at, the, um, I'm looking for the um, for the little baby Mardi Gras with the <laughs> mm -hmm. king cakes and everything. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of the same. Leading into Lent, obviously, mm -hmm. yes. and, and leading into to Easter. Okay. So I don't. Let's keep cutting. It's going to be in the cutting. bottom if it is. It's going to be in the it's bottom. In the bottom. Yes. No. Nope. 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 No, nope. no baby right, Jesus there. Who's this. next? Who's next? Who's next. Hold on. Okay, we've got to keep looking for this mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> keep keep cutting there. Here, let's see. Do you? And once again, if you would like to head over there to Mitiera. Mitiera. There you go, Ted. Take a look, see if you got a uh, little baby Jesus okay. there. They are open. Elijah got one. Was a day. Oh, we got one. Hey, we got okay. one. Woo. Next party's on him. Yep. Seven All days right. a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days of the year. The last day, though, to get the king cake out there, right? Yes. yes. And of course, for more information on La Familia Cortez restaurants, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And don't forget about the new restaurant out there at the Rim, right? The Rim. All right, tomorrow on SA Live, thank you very much, Miguel, by the way. Have you ever wondered how to make your own candle? It's a Try It Tuesday, and we're learning how to make soy candles that will burn slower and last longer. Are you trying to get a healthy start to the new year, but have trouble getting your family to eat their veggies? A local nutritionist shares delicious options to sneak in your veggies with hidden ingredients you're not gonna believe. All right. Well, if you didn't get a chance to catch it over the weekend, mm -hmm. Texas Eats premiered on Saturday. Yes. David Elder is kind of branching out. Like we were talking about, I think he said about every restaurant in town. So he's uh, going to go out all over the state. And this is what the uh, premiere episode looked like. to go inside Ike Rico food truck to see how they're making these Tex-Mex favorites because this is how Texas eats. Get down. Now we're inside the kitchen over here at Sangria on the Berg. Smoked pork belly tacos. That taco's out of this world, man. When you want Tex-Mex on the next level, I'm gonna call it Next Tex. That's a teachable moment right there. Now it's time to make Mama's enchilada casserole. Only 3047 to feed a family of five with this meal, and you're gonna have some tortillas and some oil left over, so you get to use that in different meals. So really, it's very cost effective. The little stick they were using fell in the masa in the fryer and formed the puffy. So it was an accident. So my uncle Ray took the ball and ran with it. Okay. Cheers. And what's great, not only uh, tasting all the different foods in various areas, but also some nice little tips. By the way, coming up on Saturday at 10 o'clock, right here on KSAT 12, 10 o'clock in the morning, uh, he's going to be heading up to Braunfels, talking about all the great German food up there. All right. So watch for that. And of course, tomorrow, try it Tuesday, candle making. Right? Yes. The ones that burn a little bit longer last week.